Hi guys, uh, thanks for joining us on today's stream. Uh, we have quite a lot of ground to cover, so uh, let's get started. Today's stream is about an AI update we're implementing in Endless Space 2. Um, even though we had the promotion weekend for Endless Space 1, uh, we're actually still doing quite a lot of work uh, on the ES2. With me today, I have um, William, also known as Will Be Fast, and JL with Jean-Luc. Both of them are game designers. Uh, you, you guys may say hi. Yeah, hi guys. All right, uh, <laughs> they can talk. <laughs> right. So um, let's just start. Uh, basically, would you like uh, would you like to just tell us in, in a few lines how um, the AI in the space two works? Um, yeah. So what we wanted to uh, bring to the table really for in the space two's AI that we previously had a bit more trouble with is expliciting exactly what decision has been made and exactly why to sort of trace back every single decision to the root kind of cause of that decision. Mm -hmm. um, so the idea is uh, to make the AI as, as transparent as possible to us, to QA, and also, um, as you will see, also to the players who will be able to, uh, using a set of new tools we're providing, uh, get a look into exactly what the AI is thinking and why. And when on the forums we ask people for saves, um, this is uh, the tool that we are using to dig into the AI's brain and figure out exactly what it's thinking. Okay, so um, you've mentioned the tool before we show that tool. Uh, you guys are gonna love this. Let, let's just let's just see what the situation is in the game we're gonna use in, as an example. Do you want to talk about the situation in this? Uh, maybe what, uh, what, what's happening in this game? Sure. So we've got a we've got a game up here that's um, uh, a little bit advanced. We're to uh, turn uh, twenty nine here with the Rift Vaughn, uh, and we've met at this point uh, all the other empires in the game. So we've got Vodjani, we've got Sophons, Cravers. Um, and what we can do with our um, with our dev version, we can switch to these to these sofons quickly and see what they're up to. So they're over here. We can see that they've got uh, uh, various uh, system improvements, uh, public private partnerships. They're queued. Mm -hmm. They've got fleets doing things. Um, and as a player, as a as a as a dev, we might be wondering to ourselves, well, why are they building this specific building in this specific system, and why are they sending that fleet there? Um, and we may want to sort of trace that decision back. So what we're going to be okay. doing is having a look at uh, these these uh, system improvements. Where have they come from? You know, these these ships moving. Where have they come from? Um, so that's what we're going to be looking at. Now. All right. Okay. Well, well, let's do that. Let's uh, let's switch over. So guys, this is the first time we're showing this to you. This is uh, Anfer. Uh, how, how do we get there? Do you want to tell us? Oh, yes. So this is very important. So what we're um, providing with this update is access to um, this tool. And you can have a look at the tool with any web browser. So, well, any web browser. Chrome and Firefox, we know work. I'm not sure about the other ones. Well, so um, stick to those, please. So uh, what you do is you just go into your browser and you type in localhost colon Four three seven seven. Okay. Um, give it give it a moment once you've loaded your save or once you've started your game for it to <coughs> for it to sort of the, the server to start up. But when it is started, you should end up on a page like this. Um, and if you're on a uh, local area network, you can actually connect to someone else's AI by putting in their IP address <coughs> instead of localhost. It's quite good fun. Um, so here we can see the various empires in the game um, with the state of their AI. Um, Jean-Luc, maybe you want to. Give us an overview of the different uh, tabs here and what, what everything does in this, this yeah, side. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, so yeah, when you get there, this is the default page, the uh, index. Oh, hold on before we get into this. Yes, I see we already have a lot of questions and comments. We are going to address these. Uh, yeah. At the end, we're going to have the usual Q&A session. I didn't mention it, but uh, I think that was fairly clear. We're going to answer those. Don't Thank worry you. about it. We, it's just that we uh, it's quite a substantial uh, amount of things to explain. So um, yeah, questions, work. once we've explained the things, and hopefully you'll have understood uh, or found an answer to your question in the, the interval. So uh, <coughs> back at it, Jean-Luc, sorry. Yeah, like, like Francois said, uh, this is actually the tools we use to, to, to create the AI. So they're pretty in-depth, and uh, we're going just for an overview right now. The, the first debug tab, uh, is mainly tools that the developers use uh, for the performance um, issues. So the programmers, the um, yeah, maybe the it's more not kind of yeah. 
Uh, the snapshot is uh, the data that the AI reads from the game, uh, the buildings, what kind of gains they give, what kind of feeds it, mm. uh, stuff like that. And then the analysis is processing this data into indicators that we can use to make decisions. And in the decision, this is actually where the decision is taken. Uh, the graph that Will is going to show you is there, the okay. decision graph. This is where the magic happens. This is, this where, is the where the magic happens. happens. <laughs> and finally, this is where the sausage is made. Oh, gross. <laughs> <laughs> finally, the actuators is the way the AI has to communicate with the game. Mm. And uh, we can see the, the gritty stuff, like more in details, the precise mm. fleet actions and the reasons. Yeah. Okay. So, Maybe we right, should let's, stay uh, back. Let's dive in. So I'm, I'm going to give you guys a closer look at the decision because this is the, the big part of, uh, of the AI, really. It's um, what it decides to do after that, how it actually resolves that decision is, is complicated, but it's perhaps less, uh, oh God, less interesting for a player. So you can see this is quite massive. Uh, a massive kind of graph of nodes connected together. So what does this all mean? This is only turn uh, 29 again, so I've already got all this, and you'll see turn 100, it's even bigger. Um, so these large gray boxes here are essentially uh, domains or contexts. So you can have the context of a fleet, say a star system. Uh, we can see we've got other ones like technologies. Um, so these are all domains. The, the small uh, square boxes are specific tasks like queuing a constructible. So in this case, it's a constructible technology. Um, again, these are dev tools. They're not necessarily as pretty as, uh, as the game itself, um, but they definitely work. Uh, so these are system improvements here. As long as they work, yeah. <laughs> uh, you can see we've got assigning a hero. Um, and these uh, circular um, nodes here are goals. So these are kind of more oh. abstract. Uh, they're, they're not a task, so you can't just complete the task to preserve empire integrity. <coughs> it's always something you want to do, more or less. And in order to preserve your empire integrity, you might do a bunch of uh, tasks in order to work towards that, like assigning heroes or improving your uh, your um, infantry or building more ships, etc. Okay. Um, so as you can see, all these nodes are connected together. They're connected by arrows. Um, the red thick arrows are the more important ones that push, uh, the motivate the tasks and the goals the most. Um, we can click on these uh, different nodes to have a look at, you know, okay, why, uh, why am I trying to do this? Uh, I want to preserve my empire integrity because I feel that my enemies have a lot of power. I have multiple enemies. Um, I have minor, minor factions who are threatening me, etc. So we're going to look at a specific example which is, um, as we saw before, in Gaikon, why are they, uh, why are they queuing this constructible? So we're going to look in ongoing <coughs> tasks. Uh, we're going to filter by uh, the system Gaikon. And we're going to look at, here we go. Maybe you want to remind uh, Gaikon star system in the game? Ah, Just yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Also, we'll so go back here. So that, here we yeah, go. that's the tiny star system. It already has this huge tree of decision. And it, does it just get bigger? or do it, it does just get bigger. I mean, the, it, there's a lot to writing an AI for a Forex game. There's a uh, lot of possible decisions. Um, I Players don't always realize the, 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 the difficulty <laughs> that we face in writing this kind of thing. It's a super interesting challenge, but um, as you can see, there's an awful lot to it. Uh -huh. um, so let's go back to the, uh, the debugger. So why, why are they choosing to queue public-private uh, uh, partnerships? So we can see uh, the motivation behind here. What does this <coughs> mean then? Oh, I think, I think we need to pass it time. Oh yes, we need to pass it time. Okay, so let's, let's just pass it time. When you load the save, sometimes you don't immediately have the, the motivations for the tasks because the motivations aren't actually saved in the game. Um, so let's have a look. We might we might go to Bothat instead because here they've they've queued a ship now, which might be a bit more complicated. All right. Okay. Let's do that. Uh, so Botha. Let's see. Up here we can go into Star System Botha. We can see what they've got queued. Tractable armaments. <clears throat> no, it's the old one. You need to refresh. You know, oh yes. Sorry. The... And also when we end the turn, the um so the the HTML page will kind of maintain what you had previously until you refresh it, which can be useful because you can kind of keep a snapshot of the state the AI was in. Um, so let's see, what have we got? I don't think you've got state. Yeah. 
<clears throat> the, yeah. Ah, here we go. So you can see it's red because it's very, uh, very highly motivated. We can see... This is um, because there are cell phones that they have more science stuff uh, yeah. more important than the rest. So we, we, we're going to trace back this decision, <clears throat> so we'll see. So we can click on auto filter here. All these, all these things, we're not going to explain everything. These are things you can kind of play around with. But OK, so why am I queuing, uh, so saying buy out this constructible. I want to buy it out because I want to queue it. And I want to queue it because I want to increase my system research. And we can look at all the tasks that are being pushed by my desire to increase my system research. Obviously, so phones want this more than, uh, more than other factions. Uh, improve research generation, develop my systems economy. So you can kind of trace all these decisions back. Um, again, we don't have a lot of time to look into all of these. Mm -hmm. You have this panel here that you can look at the precise heuristics of you know why this motivation is the way it is. So you can unfold um, each of these uh, kind of operations that are performed. Uh, very important fact uh, factor to consider if you want to have those heuristics. Uh, available, you're going to need to um, click on this little button up here in the top right, enable heuristics. Um, that will slow the game down a little bit. So for performance reasons, we have it turned off by default. Um, but you know, you can turn it on if you want a bit more information. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I'll pass. Do back we want to, to uh, start doing things? Can we uh, pull the strings a little bit? Yeah, we can also pull the strings. So let's have a look. In the limited version, just. Remind you of the context. So the game was uh, actually we were following the the rift boards, and they were played by an AI. Uh, but the game has been pretty calm until now. If uh, if we check the diplomacy, everyone is at cold war, so nothing much going on. If we want to have, so we were following the rift boards here, and if we go back to the cell phones. Uh, again, this is a cheat that is just on the dev version. This is not right. part of the uh, right. the AI update yes. that is shipping tonight. <laughs> so sorry, guys. Uh, the, the, some of this stuff we're keeping to ourselves. Yeah. We can see that the cell phones have a pretty neat fleet. Uh, and maybe we want them to attack the Riftborns, for example. This is something that we can do with the tools. Uh, so you will have to go to open this in analysis and then diplomacy. And here, basically, you have a summary of all the relationships of Empire 2 with the others. So Empire 2 are the softens, the red ones, as you saw in the game. And uh, their relationship with the rift boards, the pink ones that we're following, hence, uh, hence why we will be fast, uh, is reserved, is a um, cold war still, and their attitude is reserved. Um, what you see here is a relation log, is what we use to track the game actions and how the AI remembers them. So this means that uh, the softphones saw that the Riftborn had military near them at mm. some point, and they might get mad. Yeah. But we might want this to go faster, so you can click on Show Behavior, and it will take you to this screen. OK, do you want to explain what we're looking at here? <laughs> <laughs> uh, this, is, this is a state machine, a hierarchical state machine. <laughs> Excuse my accent. Uh, Do you want to pronounce that in proper English? <laughs> uh, hierarchical state machine. <laughs> hierarchical finite state machine. Beautiful. Exactly. That's much Chippy better. Um, so basically the idea is that you have huge states for each uh, diplomatic state that we have in game. Cold War, Peace, Alliance and War. So the big one here that we're looking at is Cold War because the cell phones were at Cold War with their wrist wars. And uh, they're currently in idle. So what happened mm -hmm. was that they met them. They started in Unknown. They met them. They went to Color and started in Idol. Mm. Uh, all these arrows are transitions that are based on game actions or game contexts. And you can check more details if you, if you click on a colored arrow. And the red one means the conditions are not met. And you can have the detail of the conditions here, like, like for the decision graph that will be first uh, showed before. Um, yeah, again, if you have specific questions on how any of this works, yeah, at the end, <laughs> again, we're, just, we're just note them down, and, uh, you know. <laughs> and yeah. um, okay, so we can see that the AI is in Cold War, and it needs to take some specific steps to go to war. Uh, it's a little bit uh, complicated. There are a lot of cases that you can explore if you want. For now, we want the AI to go to war more quickly. Yes. So what you can <laughs> what you can do is click the Conquest War button and click go to this state. It will, it will put the AI in the worst state yeah. of mind. So this takes some time, like because the AI will need to prepare a fleet, 
and then go to war. So now we've clicked, the AI is going to these states. We're going to ask for a new decision, like make the AI think again, and then we refresh the view yeah. to double check that indeed the AI has changed state. Now it's in the war state, and more specifically in the conquest war state. So if we go back to the game, uh, the AI is now going to start preparing war. Mm. So we're going to pass a few turns. Yeah, so it should prioritize building ships more, researching uh, military Definitely. technologies and so on. Um, because we've kind of uh, short-circuited some of the attitude feedback stuff, you might not get the correct attitude feedback uh, messages and, and um, sort of Warnings attitude states. Stuff, yeah. Um, just because we've kind of uh, just pulled it out of one state and put it in another. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of behavior, it will now prepare war with the Riftborn. Okay. Well, let's just... So, have fun with that. <laughs> let's, let, let's do that. Okay, so now if we look at uh, the setting you just changed, um, basically should have... Um, the, okay. Um, it, can, do you want to alter maybe the... No, it's froze or no? Okay. Um, it seems that the, we were encountering momentarily uh, momentary uh, technical difficulties. We'll be right back um, um, in a moment.